if it costs more, it must be better, right? That is the reason why I believe this is one of the most misunderstood precepts that Miyamoto Musashi discussed. This idea, do not pursue fancy foods or delicious foods. What was really being translated here? The idea that you would not pursue a delicious food is, in my opinion, not what Miyamoto Musashi was trying to say. What he was discussing is the pursuit of quality over quantity and trying to make a statement about the world, trying to say that expensive does not mean better. And I think it was explained in a more simple fashion, in a base statement that got that point across. In his world, he may have seen it in this way, the pursuit of expensive food, the, expen the expensive meal, people going out and spending so much money on a fleeting luxury as a meal. However, I believe what he was trying to say was that pursuing luxury over quality, over experiences with people that you care about, that is where I feel this precept was going. And I love it. As much as people say this is just an odd precept in the Dakota, I think it was very well thought out. And we will discuss this more. I remember my first trip to Thailand and I am walking through Thailand. I have a backpack on my back. Um, I was overdressed. I didn't know how to dress for Thailand. I dressed like I was going on some other type of normal vacation. I should have been wearing half the amount of clothing to deal with the heat and humidity. But I went into a area that had all these open restaurants and you sit down and you can see the foods that each restaurant is displaying that they have to eat they have racks with ice and fish hanging shellfish everything that's been brought in from the sea they also have shops that have hanging chickens that are raw and you and again, also in like an iced area. It has like crushed ice on the bottom to keep this food fresh through that one day. The idea of frozen food was not in Pattaya, Thailand. The food was caught the night before, or it was butchered the night before, brought into the city, and now you had fresh seafood and fresh meats to choose from that were consumed that day. When that shelf area was empty, that restaurant didn't have the food anymore. It sold out of what it bought for that day. It may get replenished, maybe not. Their day might be over. But it changed my mind about something. The idea of good food. Let's go with the raw translation of this precept. The idea of sitting down to a $100 meal in a five-star restaurant, someplace, uh, exciting, interesting, temporarily, perhaps. But to see freshly grown ingredients, herbs, vegetables, fruits, and then combined with freshly caught seafood, freshly butchered meats, all designed to be brought into a city and eaten that day. Absolutely fascinating, fresh, delicious, no processed foods, no preservatives, no weird chemicals added. It changed my idea of what good, good food was. 
It changed my feeling on what good food was. I now look at when I travel, it's one of the reasons why I enjoy street food as much as I do. And I have a whole series on this channel about street food. Because of that fact, it is the freshest, most delicious food you can eat. It is something that North America has basically turned its eye away from. We're not going to allow street food because it's unregulated. Unregulated means that it's not full of processed chemicals and preservatives. That's what unregulated means. If it was regulated, it would be full of things that probably give you cancer. But when you travel overseas to these countries where the food is cooked fresh right in front of you at that moment, with the idea that if you run out of a certain herb, they're getting on their cell phone and they're telling of another cart, I need herbs. And that cart pulls up and they grab more fresh herbs and that cart then leaves. And they are ready to go for another two, three hours of cooking. That's an eating experience. And that's why I fell in love with that eating experience. Another aspect that I believe that Miyamoto was trying to say. He had traveled throughout Japan. He had traveled to see the urban and the non-urban environments. And it is possible that he witnessed the way of life of those who live outside of an urban environment and grow their own food. The freshness of the food. Also, the time and effort that it took to grow this food. And I believe that may have played a role in this precept. He traveled and saw people who lived off the land. They grew their own food, cooked it, ate it. They raised their own animals, slaughtered them, ate them. Everything was fresh. They did all the work themselves. And the meals were more of a family and community environment as opposed to the disconnected and cold environment of a sit down, order food off a menu, then pay and walk out. A necessity of cities? Maybe so. Maybe it's one of the reasons why I don't care to live in cities anymore and I don't even care to visit cities anymore. However, in opposition, Meals being something that brings communities together, brings families together. That may have played a role in his comment. Again, in translation, this precept may have came out sounding like, do not pursue these fancy expensive foods, or, and that's how it translated, but it may have been to take your meals more seriously as a family or community event. I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. In the West, growing up, we had what is known as the barbecue. <laughs> Let's talk about this. The barbecue is a gathering of friends, multiple families come together, kids, wives, husbands, and it's centered around this grill. The grill is made hot, maybe certain uh, woods are added that add a delicious sort of uh, aromatic taste to the meats that are cooked on it. And the men bring in all these different meats to cook. Meanwhile, the wives are preparing all these side sauces and dishes. It is a community event. Everybody's talking. Everybody's enjoying themselves. It's bringing people together. And the meal becomes a gathering. This is the barbecue. And it made me think when I read and when I 
read more about this precept. Again, I go back to the idea of the cold sit down in a restaurant. It can be an experience, of course it can. But the gathering that occurs at a home style meetup, a barbecue type meetup, there's something more than just eating going on. There's a community being built. To summarize this video, I want to go back to the author. Miyamoto Masashi traveled and had to fight battles far from the people he cared about or understood, any sort of family, any sort of friends. He had to travel far away. And I believe this holds true to warriors today who have to travel far away to fight battles. Very similar to such as a businessman that has to travel constantly. Take flights far away from home. When they return, the meal is more than just sustenance. It is about bringing the family back together. Rejoining of the family. This is where I believe the West, especially in North America, has this idea of thanksgiving, of this meal that brings everybody who has traveled far away, who has left to other cities, to other states, lives in other countries. They come together to have that meal to show togetherness. That is what the meal becomes. More than just some fancy food on a plate. It goes to the next level. It transcends to something far more important. And I believe that is what Musashi meant by this precept. And I'm curious what you think. So I appreciate your time. And I would like to know what you think about this precept. It is probably the most misunderstood in my opinion. And I like to look at it from a literal sense and from a philosophical sense, both. What are your thoughts on this precept? We will continue on every Saturday with this series. And I hope you're having a wonderful week in between. We will talk again soon and aloha.